Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Education Connection. Um, I'm here with the Minister of Education, the Honorable Diallo Rubain, JPMP. We have our guest from the Bermuda Libraries this evening. We have the Director of Libraries and Archives, Ms. Joanne Brengman, and we also have Ms. Marla Smith, who is over Youth Services um, as the youth services librarian. So thank you for our panel here this evening. Thank you for the people that are tuned in tonight to watch our program. And we have with us the Bermuda Library. Minister Rabain, over to you. I uh, Thank you, Dana. And um, once again, thank the Bermudian public for, um, for tuning in to this episode of Education Connection. Um, today, we're going to be talking with uh, Marla Smith and Joanne Brangman from the Bermuda National Library. Uh, Marla Smith is at the Youth Library and Joanne Brangman is the Director of the Libraries and Archives. Um, next week is uh, National Library Week and there will be a host of events at our wonderful institutions that we just want to get um, a little understanding from and some descriptions and then we'll get into some good conversation. Uh, hopefully we have um, persons out there sending in questions so they can find out more about what our libraries mean to us and why this is important for uh, them to uh, utilize the libraries and how the libraries support our uh, Bermuda as a whole. So um, with that, uh, Ms. Smith, um, I'll just hand it over to you and um, you can just take us through what's happening. Oh, there's wonderful things happening at the Bermuda Youth Library. Okay, good evening. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the Youth Library, is, um, if you don't know where it is, it's located over on Church Street, 74 Church Street. And we cater to uh, patrons from birth through to 18 years of age. So uh, we encourage parents to come in and sign up their children um, as soon as they can and start reading to them from an early age. It's so important that they read, start reading to their kids from an early age. Um, at the library, we have um, reading materials print as well as audiobooks. we have um, magazines, and we have a lot of online services. And to top that off, we have a lot of programs that go on um, in the library to support literacy uh, development. Uh, we are, uh, the, people think that the Youth Library and the National Library are two different um, places, but there's all one place, just that Youth Services is located over on uh, Church Street and the Adult Services is located over on, on Queen Street. Um, as part of uh, National Library Week, the Youth Library is going to be kicking off on Saturday, this Saturday, with our Pajama Rama Day. And our Pajama Rama Day is actually just a casual day for everyone to come in in your pajamas if you want to, or come in with something casual, com comfy, and we're just going to spend the day um, celebrating literacy, um, sharing stories and doing a lot of different programming for children. We'll be starting off early at 9.30 in the morning with our Book Babies program, which will run for about a half an hour with songs and finger plays and stories. Uh, we will move into our story time session at 10 o'clock, which would be um, stories and games for the children. And we will also have um, our local author, Karen Franks, come in to share the Abigail Dream Adventure Story series with the children. And she's got a lot of um, uh, new things that's developing with her whole uh, book series. And we will top off the, the morning before we break for lunch for with our magic show by um, Mr. Wiz, who's coming to do a magic show in the library for the children. Meanwhile, in the library, you can check out books, you can read stories. We're gonna have craft tables and a uh, fun area for the little ones and we'll actually even just have one room dedicated where you can just cool back on the bean bags and relax with your, your books and just read, get families just to come in and share stories with. So that's one of the things that we're gonna uh, be doing to cap off, um, to start off National Library Week and the main library will have a whole bunch of activities going on over there also. And Ms. Brangman can share with you with some of the things that they're gonna be doing next week. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Smith. Um, we're going to start off on the Sunday um, with connect with your live connect with yoga 
and at your library. Um, and we have a special, it's going to be a hybrid session. It will be, <coughs> there'll be a few people who will be allowed to join us here in the library and the rest of you can join via Zoom. Um, actually, I think I will go ahead and show, go through the slideshow. Okay, so the next slide, please. Let's see. Okay, Ms. Smith already talked about Barama, Jamarama, and this is ours. So the first one will be connect through healing at your library. And it's going to be done with yoga therapist Trishan Halton as we discuss moving through grief and trauma. We, we as an island and the world has been through such a traumatic time during this pandemic. We figured during National Library Week, we'll find a way to help, help us heal and get over, get through what we've been through. And hopefully we're on the path to uh, a new and on the path to uh, better times. So that will be at 12 from 12:30 to 1:30 on Sunday, April 3rd, and you can it's free and you can register through www.bnl.bm or via our Facebook page. Or um, if you are a member of the library, you'll get the constant contact email where you can also register. The next thing we'll be having, well, not an event we're having, but it'll be National Library Workers Day, which is on the Tuesday, April 5th. And we're inviting everyone to just leave hashtag on Facebook or Instagram, stop by and visit, say thank you to your favorite library staff members, and even let us know why they're your favorite library staff member. On Wednesday, April 6th, both the main library and youth libraries will be having open house and offering tours. The tours will be at, at the youth library from 11 to, two, well, not from 11 to 2, at 11 and at 2. Um, and you can just stop by and at the youth library and at the adult library, the tours will be at 12 and 1. And the tours here at the adult library will in also include the Bermuda Historical Society. So if anyone has never been into the museum, this is an opportunity for you to also have a copy, uh, have a visit to the historical museum. For that whole week, from Monday to Thursday, Monday, April 4th to Thursday, April 7th, you also have Connect with Bermuda History using our digital collection. Anyone who's interested in learning how to use the digital collection can contact our local studies librarian, Ellen Hollis, and she can you can schedule an appointment and she'll do a one on one session with you to walk you through how to use the digital collection. For anyone who doesn't know what that collection is, it is a collection of the old newspapers. We have Royal Gazette, Bermuda Recorder, Bermuda Times. We also have magazines like Fame Magazine, they're all Workers' Voice, and they're all on there for you to be able to search. And for those people who are doing research on Bermuda history or they're doing, doing genealogy, this source is, is, is invaluable. So Ms. Hollis will be giving 30-minute sessions. So you can stop by or you can contact her. Her email address is ejhollis at gov.bm or you can email libraryevents at gov.bm. And on Friday and Saturday, we will be having our annual big book sale. The sale is normally held in September, but because of the pandemic, we haven't been able to have the sale. So we are doing the sale this time in April. So it'll be April 8th and April 9th. The books are a dollar each, except for any Bermuda books that we have. The Bermuda books will be individually priced. If you have, have a library card, then you get to 
fill up a bag for five dollars bring your own bag and um and you can just pay five dollars and walk out with your stack of books and outside of even though it's not national library week the final thing we'll be doing that week is on sunday april 10th we will be taking part in the court street market so look for us under our big orange tent and um, stop by and you can come and learn more about the Bermuda National Library and the services that we have to offer. Ah, one thing I did forget, also on the Saturday, hmm. uh, this is not an event, this is, we have have a podcast, it's an interview with that Keith Caesar has done with Florence Webb Maxwell about girl cut. And um, I don't know how many of you will be are taking part. The Barclay Institute is running their One Island, One Book initiative, and we are partnering with them. So this is an interview with this, with Mrs. Maxwell about girl cut, and it'll be it's being put up as a podcast. So again, you can access it via our Facebook page or Instagram. Later in the month, outside of National Library Week, since I'm on Girl Cut, I will say we will have two other events. One on Thursday, April 21st, we will be live streaming When Voices Rise, um, which is a film about the theater boycott. So again, for those young people who don't know anything about the theater boycott and who have read Girl Cut and want to have some background information. This will be an opportunity to watch the film and learn something from those people who were actually involved in the theater boycott and also some of the other people who were, there were actually three groups participating around that time. So to give you some history and background to go with the novel. And then finally on Thursday, April 28th, we will be having a book discussion and dinner here at the at the main library with Mrs. Maxwell. Um, and that book discussion will be facilitated by Dr. Kim Dismont Robinson. And again, we're, that will be live streamed and we're inviting anyone who has read the book to join in and um, ask questions. It's your opportunity to question Mrs. Maxwell. She will be here in the room with us and get any of your questions answered. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank, thank you for that, for that good intro on uh, the wonderful things that are happening at the Bermuda Library. For, for, our, audience, for, for, our, for our listening audience, um, um, I want you to know that we are on we are online. You can catch us streaming on CITV Facebook, the Ministry of Education um, Facebook page. Um, you can also catch us on Twitter um, and CITV YouTube as well at entering questions, any questions you might want to ask about um, what's going on at our, our libraries. Um, and this is for e this is for either of you. Um, what is the process to obtaining a library card? Okay. Let me take it for the for the for the youth library. Uh, we require that um, the parent or the legal guardian of the child come in with a picture ID of themselves and a current um, bill, something that will validate their address. And um, it's as simple, just filling out a form, and they can get a library card for for the child. And we charge no fines for um, overdue books. We just want our books to come back in the same um, um, shape that they went out. Um, but um, it is a very simple process to get a library card for a child. And we would hope that all children, as soon as they're born, are signed up. You know, I, one thing I would like to see is, is, is you know, we, we move forward with, with, as we move forward with technology, mm -hmm. you know, um, so children, you know, for example, our children, our children should be issued an ID for school. That ID should, for school can also be the library card automatically mm -hmm. configured. Should automatically be the card you need to catch the bus. 
configure, mm -hmm. you know, and so, so, so it one stop shopping and you can have all of those things. That's a, that's a much bigger vision, but something I've always dreamed of having. And even, even with adults, um, the same, yeah. the same, the same thing, your ID can be utilized for, for multiple different things. And it helps mm -hmm. to keep a connectivity within yeah. government, you know, so, so we don't end up with, you know, 10 different databases of the same information. That's uh, true. floating yeah. around there. And if you go and update your phone number in one, it's updated across government. You update your email in one, it's updated across government. So you're not worried about having to call five different places to update that, you know, critical information. But um, Joanne, sorry for that interruption. That, that's okay, um, because like, I can tell you, um, since I've been here since um, the Stone Ages, I can tell you that <laughs> was that was a discussion many years ago in government about having one database where we all access the same information. It, um, you know, if you went to TCD and renewed your license, it automatically updated your address for your library membership. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, it is something we would love to see. It would make our lives a lot easier. Though I have to admit nowadays, your address is not as important as your email address. <laughs> Your, your physical address. Mm -hmm. So uh, here at the adult library, it is just as simple to join. You Again, you bring in your photo ID, um, driver's license that is uh, no more than three months old uh, will be suffice. Otherwise, bring in proof of address and, and sign up. And as Marla said, mm -hmm. It membership in the library is free. Um, here at the main library, we are experimenting, and we too are no longer charging fines um, to see if that gets our books back. <laughs> um, people, All right, don't worry. I, you know, I, you know, I'm guilty of a, a late book here and there. <laughs> yeah, but what we found is people panic when they think that they owe money, and. Mm -hmm. So they keep the book because they're afraid of how much money they owe. So um, we're not, not knowing that the fine is well. adding up. Yeah. And and the fines don't add up very much. It's a maximum of ten dollars. So but in these times, ten dollars is a lot of money for some people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, no, um, all we as Marla said, all we want is to have our books back in the condition that they left it. So uh, we invite anybody to come. And, and here you can have a membership from the age of 14. Between 14 and 18, the, the young adults will have to have their parents' signature. Uh, after that, um, it's they're on their own. They can sign up. Uh, we are also trying to go paperless. So it's really just a matter of signing up on the computer and off you go. Um, one of the other things I'm looking into is um, having it set up on our website or through the government portal where you mm -hmm. can register and then we'll just pop your card in the mail. Okay. Uh, does, does the membership expire? Memberships do expire. You have to renew it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was mainly to be able to keep the addresses up to date. Yeah. So just on a yearly basis, okay. uh, it will roll over. If you come in, if it's been a year, we just go through and just make sure that all your information is still current. Um, there's no uh, any filling out of forms or anything like that. We just make sure that what we have is current. Right. And we'll even at the adult library, we'll even do it over the phone if you or send okay. us an email. Um, you can actually register online if you go through our if you have any members who only want to have an, um, only want to use things online and don't really mm -hmm. want to come into the library. You can just go to the website, click on online membership, fill in the information and they will process the information and mail you a card that'll give you a number that you can use to access all the online services the ebooks the courses anything you want to take advantage of on our website uh, 
that and that you know and i was just thinking about the website when you mentioned that and there are something there are some things that you can access on the website that people may not know i know mm -hmm. i've always talked about the uh the mango program that allows you that teaches you to speak foreign languages and the tutor.com program um that that provides tutoring services for for you know anyone from from primary all the way up to college um, what else is on the website? Um, and you can, you can, you know, expand on those two that I spoke about, but um, what else could they get on the website? Could they get, say, I know we talked earlier about audio books, would, would they be able to have access to audio books from the website and, and different things like that? Yeah. yeah. One of the things that we, uh, we have on the, uh, website is tumble books and tumble books is a, a read along service. If parents, um, used to come in and get the books that uh, the kids could read along with and, and if the book is also read with them. They can read the, the text along with listening to it, but they can actually access that online through our Tumble Books um, collection. And our Tumble Books collection has both nonfiction, it has um, videos, it has um, even graphic novels on it. So if kids are looking for online reading material, they can just go to our website and access the tumble books collection and they can actually read the text of books and as they listen to the story being read to them so that's one of the things that i think that we need to let people know that because people come and ask ask us about um books that um talking books and that's one of the services that they can access online and i can vouch for tumble okay. books as being a great thing because now that i have a great nephew <laughs> uh we've We've played on Tumble Books for a little bit. Um, fortunately, he's one years old and he loves books, so um, we will be take, we've taken great advantage of Tumble Books. Good, good. Um, for adults and young adults and the others, we also have Libby. Uh, you can download the Libby app onto your phone, your computer, your tablet, um, and it will give you access to ebooks and audiobooks. Mm -hmm. um, Libby is also also provides access to online courses, so college courses that you could take, um, and you can register. You can get continuing education credit for. Um, there are magazines also on there. Um, I think you get access to three thousand magazines, and they mm -hmm. are in various languages. And all of that is done through Libby. Okay, that is good stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a proponent of the library. I know I always talk about it. It was one of the places I, I spent quite a bit of time when I was in primary school. Um, you know, I was just talking to my daughter and telling her, you know, it was an uncommon for to spend about two hours in the library every Saturday just reading because that's what we that's what we had back then. You know, it was mm -hmm. funny when she said, but you know, why go to the library and you can just buy the book, Daddy? And you know, I was like, you know, it's a different world now. Or yeah. you can get a get an audio, you know, um, what what is the audio thing that you can buy and you know, you get five, oh, two well, books free a month and, and different stuff. So there is different things that so I get it where the library is, you know, being innovative and doing things differently than mm -hmm. just you know, just walk in, check out a book and then leave. Um, Marla, I, some of the oh, I'm sorry, Miss Smith. <laughs> I excuse me, audience. I've known um, for a long, long. We've known each other for quite a while. Um, we worked together at the youth center back mm -hmm. um, when I was in my early teens. <laughs> so it's, it's been a, it's been a minute. But um, the the you know the the youth stuff that we have there, the chess club, um, the the um, Lego club, the STEM club. You know, uh, reading time and, and all those sorts of things. Could, could we just, um, you know, go a little more in depth than that, especially for our parents that might be listening, and just to see what um, what else they they could be doing with their children on a Saturday that they might not even know. Right. But well, we always feel that we should be developing the whole child, and so um, we try to have events and programs that will expose kids to all different types of things. Um, so therefore, that's why we have um, the STEAM program, so that the kids can be exposed to um, science, um, um, technology, um, engineering, the arts, and, and music. 
Um, math, so math, it's math. Mathematic, mathematic. Math. <laughs> I'm thinking the arts. And so we tried to um, have a, a variety of different um, programs. And that STEAM club is once a month. Um, we have uh, Abel, Mr. Kieran Hall, one a collection librarian who, who runs the STEAM club. And he tries to have a variety of different um, uh, programs that touch on each of the, the five different elements of, of STEAM. We also have the chess club. We have Mr. Uh, Larry um, Eben, who's one of uh, Bermuda's um, master chess players. And he runs the uh, chess club from the, the library on Saturdays. So we he takes stu any students, wherever you are in your chess ability, you can come. And he tries to uh, pair the kids up. And we have some adults that come who are trying to learn. And he will um, teach them all the different dynamics of, of chess. Um, that goes on in the library on Saturdays. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Eben was sick for a while, so we haven't started back, but we're hoping to get that going again. Um, we also have um, a teen advisory board. Um, this is a, a group of students age 14 to 18 that meet at the library every Wednesday afternoon from four until about 5.15. And they are, are actually our volunteers. They help us and assist in the library with programming. And they also um, help with um, decisions that we make for teen programming. And the teen advisory board, um, we try to get them to um, give back to the community. And so therefore they're able to acquire their community service hours um, while they come in and assist at the library. And that program runs during uh, the school year. So from September until about May um, that, that runs. And that's been going for about 14, 15 years. And we've had a lot of, of our graduates who've come back and helped um, with the running of the teen advisory board. So it's kind of a, a mentoring and a, and a leadership skill mm -hmm. Um, program that we that we run at the library. We also have um, uh, our baby program, which I mentioned before, the book baby program, as well as we have worked with Bermuda School of Music over several years, and we offer um, a program which is called Tapping Tree um, Frogs, and it's a introduction to music, uh, language development, and books that the Bermuda School of Music. Um, does in partnership with us. So that's another program that we, we've done at, at the library. And our whole thing is, especially with the um, National Library Week theme, um, connect at your library. We've always tried to reach out and connect with our community and partner with other agencies so that we can offer programming uh, for parents and children. And um, one of the things is to make it as nominal as possible and if possible, free. So I think that um, that's something that people uh, should look at when it comes to the library, that we are open for everybody. And we try to meet those obstacles that sometimes cost of activities um, 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 allow, doesn't allow some people to be able to participate in some activities. So we try to make it as um, reasonable as possible. Okay, good stuff, yeah. good stuff. Um, I have one question that I had gotten and I haven't had the opportunity to call you and talk to you about it. I had a question about book babies and whether or not the youth library has considered, because you do them on Thursday mornings and Saturday mornings, yes. um, that if there was any thought to doing it earlier in the week or doing it in the afternoon. Well, um, I guess we could look at it. The only thing is that we have afternoon programming going on in the, in the um, auditorium uh, right now. So it would be kind of a scheduling issue. And we picked the 930 time because most parents said they were up early with little ones, getting other students or getting other kids out to school. And it was kind of sandwiching between up early and nap time. So in order to keep the kids engaged in the program and they're not fussy, that 930 was the time that we had um, come up with that seemed to work for most people. Okay. And we had it on a Thursday for all those stay-at-home moms that we're looking for an activity, but then also having it on a Saturday for those moms that were at work, that they would also get an opportunity to um, enjoy the program for with their little ones. 
Okay. Um, right. Minister, I'll throw in, the, well, did you have a question? Or? No, no, no. I, I was going to actually throw it over to the adult library of some of the things that they have, some of the programs that, that, that they have that are standard down there for, um, for adults. Okay. Well, um, what we're, we're actually revamping our programs um, starting on April 13th. What we're looking for is community partnerships. And our first partnership for this year is going to be with Toastmasters, one of the Toastmasters groups oh. on the island. And they will be starting there. We'd started just before the pandemic. I think we got two sessions in before we had to shut everything down. Um, mm -hmm. And they will be meeting here every other Wednesday, starting on April 13th. Um, and they will meet from 6.30 to 7 or 6, 6 to 7.30 here at the library. So that's one event, but we're putting it out there and we're about to do a survey to see what kind of programs people would be interested in. Um, we're trying to, we're looking to be able to offer more courses and programs for seniors. Um, but again, we're looking as Marla said, we like to be able to offer courses free of charge or for a minimal charge. So we're looking right. for volunteers or people who might be willing to come and share their knowledge, whether it's knitting and crocheting or computer skills, because a lot of our seniors are still asking for help um, using their, they get these iPads and phones for Christmas and their birthdays and the kids give it to them, but then nobody takes the time to show them how to actually use it. Right. So um, that's one of the things we've been wanting to do. Um, we looked at maybe even using the TAB students and doing a seniors to seniors program. Mm -hmm. So where the kids help the seniors and, and again, get their community hours. So, um, so if anyone's out there and they have any courses that they would be willing to teach, skills that they want to share, um, they can feel free to contact me. Again, my email address is jbrangman at gov.bm or again, the generic email address library events at gov.bm. And we'd be more than happy to try and work with them to see what we can do. Um, That's good, good stuff. Is, is the writing, I, I remember there was a seniors writing club at the library. Um, is that still going on? Mrs. Mrs. Maxwell did the seniors writing course. We did it twice. It's not going on right now. The next okay. course we have coming up um, will be in May. That's being run by Dr. Angela Berry. Um, this is mm -hmm. the second module of we're doing Bermudian and Caribbean literature. Um, that one is not free. Um, it is a four week, five week session um module and it um and it's 150 dollars for the course okay good stuff let me ask a question and this is for both of you what would you say is the most popular genre that is borrowed that is borrowed more than any type of genre let's start with the adults uh and well it probably mysteries I, I think mysteries. mysteries. Um, we do have a core collection of romance readers, and they're fierce <laughs> romance readers. <laughs> uh, but uh, mysteries are probably the most popular. Uh, how, speaking to uh, before I go to you, Marla. Speaking of um, mystery romance and that, how did the Valentine's um, Book of Valentine's Day of a Book event go off? Oh, that actually. Um, Blind date. Ah, so you, you thought you thought you thought I didn't remember. I didn't remember that. <laughs> it actually went off quite well. People people really okay. enjoyed it. So we had blind date with a book. We also had the winter reading program, which just finished, and um, we just did the drawer for the goodie basket. Um, and I think Ms. Catherine Hay was the uh, was the winner of of the basket. But yep. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, yeah. <laughs> I said I, I know Miss Hay. I, I do know I do know Miss Hay. Okay. So, yep, I figured. <laughs> for, for former former teacher. Former teacher. Oh, okay. I, I'm not sure if she still teaches. 
Oh, um, so Marla, for, no. for, when, when it comes no, no, not, not, you're thinking her sister. Maria. Maria. You're thinking okay, Maria. I'm thinking of sister. Okay. <clears throat> so, so Miss Smith, when it comes to the youth library, what is the most popular genre? I mean, but it's such a wide variety down there of all there, of these kids' books. Right. And they have there these is. series that, that run on, that, that just continuously add to them when, when you're down there. I think, but I do think it would be graphic novels. The graphic novels right now for both boys and girls, um, between the Dogmen and the um, Babysitter Club and a whole variety of uh, series that have now gone to graphic novels. I think a lot of the, um, I think that's what's moving a lot off the, our shelves right now. Mm -hmm. and we, because graphic novels now transcends from um, early readers right up into young adult. Um, so now we have, um, before it was just like the middle age, the intermediate readers. But now that we have stuff for early readers in graphic novels, um, I think that's what's really going off the shelves. Every time you bring it comes in, it's gone back out again. Yep. Okay. And, and and some of them have transitioned over here to the adult graphic novels. Uh, see? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. That's and, and so I think, there is a tie in there. Yeah, I think a lot of parents were hesitant about graphic novels because they thought they were like comic books. Um, but graphic novels are, are written both fiction and nonfiction. So you can right. get um, the um, uh, a biography of Martin Luther King in a graphic novel. You can get a um, story about the Underground Railroad in a graphic novel, um, history books. Um, so uh, slowly parents are warmed up to the fact that before it was like, no, no, get a real book, you know, but um, uh -huh. now that they're realizing that um, a lot of the graphic novels um, are based, they can get it on fairy tales, they can get it on folklore on so many different subjects. So um, with the interest, high interest, I always say, just give them, sometimes they can't always eat vegetables. Sometimes you might have to give them a little sweet every so often. So they have a little graphic novels and then slide in, a, a, um, you know, one of the um, traditional books that the parents will like, you know, one of the classics if they um, feel. But my thing is always is, if they have a reluctant reader, find out what their interest is and then go from their interest and then expand out. So if they're, um, they like football, give them a book on a, a football player or you know, how um, techniques of playing football. And then from their branch out, if they have a particular football player that they like, what country is he from? Get a book about the country, get a book, a biography about that person and then slowly ease out into other material. Yep. Was well, just here on my desk was my daughter is a, a, a ferocious reader, and this is her book. This is the one she's reading now. Oh, wow, Stephen King. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I you know, I, and it's interesting. It's interesting. I, I used to, I used, I used to have a large collection of Stephen King models, um, um novels, but you know, I just stopped um reading those. I, I'm more of a, a spy thriller i guess uh, mm -hmm. I, I fall in that category spy mm -hmm. thriller type um but what i find now i read more is just um factual reports <laughs> is what i spent oh, a lot of time a lot of time reading and, and, and gleaning from um I, one 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 fun question that i have is um what what book is consistent is there a book that's consistently returned late out of, out of all of them, you just notice um, when this book goes, it, it always takes a long time to come back. Um, <clears throat> hmm. or, I think or just all of them, just all books. of them like that. Yeah, right now it's the, if someone takes out a book, one of the, the graphic novel series, we know that it's gonna be, they're either gonna come back in and say they need to have it renewed or something like that. It's not mm -hmm. gonna come back one, one time. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay. afraid uh, adults are always late. Um, <laughs> so, uh, no, I shouldn't say that. We have some voracious, some voracious readers who regularly bring their books back and start over again. I mm. can't think of any one book. The things that might take the longest to come back are probably the Bermuda books. Mm. Um, when mm. people take out Bermuda books and then they take a little while to come back. Partly because most of the Bermuda books are nonfiction. Right, right, right. Um, so it takes takes a little effort, but um, yeah, that those would be the ones. Um, we did 
remember many years ago, Ma, Mrs. Smith, and he stopped, um, <laughs> when they did, the Ministry of Education did um, the reading, was it Reading Olympics? Oh, the Reading Olympics. Oh, my dear. Oh. Yeah. And it, um, this is way back in the days of um, Minister Gerald Simons. Yes. And they that actually. Was the early 90s. Yeah, they actually decimated our Bermuda collection. So we've had to try and rebuild because parents were forced to take out Bermuda books. Mm. And okay. so we lo we actually lost a lot of books because people took them out and did not bring them back. So um, that that was a challenge for us. So we, if you've got any Bermuda books home on your shelves, please bring them back. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I have Bermuda books, uh, but they didn't go from the library. But you know, who knows? <laughs> so, <laughs> and I would also not just say, for you and up to our, our listening audience, if there's anybody out there. And while I'm on that, I'll do the plug for the digital collection as well. That um, I, we're still hunting down Bermuda recorders. So if there's anybody out there, um, we have serious gaps in our collection of Bermuda recorders. So if anybody okay. has any Bermuda recorders tucked away somewhere, we would love to be able to borrow them so that we could digitize them and get them onto our, our online digital collection. Yes, and just a, a thing about Bermuda books. Um, if you have Bermuda books, please treasure them. If you're not, because it's amazing, you go to the barn and you go to some of these places and uh, books have been, um, Bermuda books have been um, just, people have just picked them up and um, disposed of them. Some people don't understand the value of Bermuda books. A lot of times they're only printed once. Um, right. So um, once that book is um, destroyed, um, that's it. That's one less copy that's out there that's circulating. So um, that's something that we should um push with people, Bermudians, that if you have Bermuda books, hold on to them, hold on to that collection, pass them down to your kids because they are, are valuable bits of history. Yeah, I mean, and it's that's how we've been able to rebuild our collection. It's been thanks to the barn and these secondhand places where people have wow, okay. taken their books and they've contacted us to say that they have them and we've been able to um, build the collection again. And like, I think we also had a big donate, a single donation from someone um, giving us a bunch of Bermuda books. So we've been able to rebuild the collection. Mm -hmm. Okay, One well, thing. that 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 is encouraging, but at the same way, depressing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I do see coming out of COVID, um, a lot of parents are coming in saying, um, really pushing to get their kids to have books back in their hands. I think with um, kids on virtual learning, they had their devices in their hands 24 seven. Now they had an excuse, well, mom, I'm, I'm all online or mom, I'm doing my, my work. And parents were very, find it very hard to get them downtime from, um, from their devices. And we have a lot of parents now that are coming in and saying, they're bringing back their, their kids who haven't been into the library for a while and saying they're trying to get them to actually just pick up a book. So that's um, been very promising that um, people are just wanting them to put down their devices and and to pick up a book and read it. So they've been coming in to get some help to, especially if they have a reluctant reader. Um, so we're starting to see the numbers come back up now that we're slowly opening up, which is a good sign. Yeah, and we invite them all to please, parents, adults, one of these days we'll have a lovely new library where the adult library and the children are dream, in one dream. location <laughs> and the parents will be able to just drop their kids off at the youth section and come over and get their well, they go to, well, <laughs> yes. you know, you know that the, the, there's, there's, there's I, I, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to court controversy <laughs> by, saying, <laughs> by saying that. Um, so so as, as we reach the top of the hour, we normally wrap up around seven because people want to go and watch the news and maybe eat their dinner and such. Just, just, a, just a quick probing question for, for, for both of you is um, where do you see the future of libraries and the role that they play in the community uh, moving forward? 
Um, I think libraries will continue to be the open uh, free service for the public, a place where people can go to get information, to get resources, and to also to get recreational material. And even though with technology um, that has um, expanded with so many different services, especially with the children, I still feel that libraries play an important part in, in supplying them with print material. So I think that it would, as we go forward, there will always be the more technological um, literacy um, services with online databases and talking books, but there will always be that need to have print things to put into children's hands. So I see that we're gonna be going forward after the pandemic, we'll be doing more virtual programming, literacy-based programming, and that's a good thing. Um, so I think there's much more that we can be doing. Yeah. Okay. And and I, can, I can answer very quickly and say, the library is a bridge for the digital divide. We <laughs> like it or not, um, technology mm -hmm. requires funds. And one thing that the pandemic proved is mm -hmm. that you have to have, people have to have access to the internet, they, the things that they have to have. And those that don't, the library's here to provide it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, yes, it is. But ladies, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to be with us today. I want to thank. Um, we, we, I see some comments here from em, from Senator Emily Gale Deal and from Melissa Don Donay. Um, I want to thank them for tuning in and um, posting. Um, both basically, they're just saying wonderful job, ladies. So I, you know, didn't know it was these these so many services there. And so with that, I'll just call back. Um, uh, and it just popped up, great interview, very informative. I'll just call back um, our host, Ms. Dana, who can uh, wrap us up and take us home. Yes, good evening again. Thank you for a great discussion. I'm looking forward to taking my daughter to the library. So we I think she has her membership already, I'm pretty sure. Um, but we want to thank Ms. Joanne Brengman from the Bermuda Library and Ms. Marla Smith from the Bermuda National Library and Ms. Marla Smith from the Youth Library Division. Minister, thank you for being here with us again this evening and taking us on this journey through- I wouldn't have been any other place. <laughs> education connection. And we look forward to another episode in another two weeks. So good night, everyone. And we'll see you soon. Stay safe. All good right. Night. Good night, everyone. Okay, I think the broadcast is successfully ended. <laughs> Sorry for the pause. Sorry. Still saying live on my screen, Omar. It's still saying live on my screen. <laughs>